Hi, this is Chuck with Hillbilly Hellcats. Today we're going to take a look at song number 16 on Rev It Up with Taz, which is I Dig Jazz. And uh, once again, we'll be going through it at half speed. Here's an E, an A, a D, a G, a B, and an E. Okay, this song is in the key of A minor and uh, may have some shapes that you haven't seen before, but uh, let's check it out. Okay, first two chords. We're going to play an A minor here at the fifth fret. First fingers barring strings one, two, three. Third fingers on the fourth string, seventh fret. So you strum through the chord, then pick strings two, one. And then the next chord is what's called an inversion of that A minor chord. It's still an A minor, but it has the notes arranged in differently. And notice I can keep my third finger down on the fourth string, slide it up to the tenth fret, add the second finger on the third string, pinky on the second string, first finger on the eighth fret of the first string. So it looks like all together just like that next couple chords all right now we're going to play a D sharp diminished like this. Going one, three, two, four. Pinky on the first string at the eleventh fret. Strum to one. Strum to one and then down a fret. So that would be E flat diminished. So all together, whoops, many things are harder to play when you slow them down and think about them. Okay, then. All right, now we're going to take that same chord shape and play it with the pinky up at the 17th fret. That makes it an A diminished. Down three frets. Down three frets. Down three frets. So. Okay, so those last two chords are a C diminished. By the way, as the whenever diminished chord moves in three frets at a time like that, every note in the chord names the chord, and it's the very same set of notes every three frets. So, just arbitrarily, I like to refer to, I like to call it by the highest ringing note. So that's why I call it. You could say that we have here an A diminished, F sharp diminished. D sharp diminished, C diminished, or you could say they're all just A diminished inversions. Once more we play the C diminished, then we keep our pinky anchored and move the whole rest of the chord down one fret. ways you could name this chord. Uh, this is a B flat 9. 
A B flat nine with a missing root. There's the root. And many times you play chords without a root, especially if you're going to be in a band and you've got another instrument like a bassist playing the root. All right, let's check that out. Okay, now. I'm going to steal a lick from Django Reinhardt, there, but everybody plays this lick. So, it's... Pinky on the 4th string at the ninth fret. So that's going to be fingers 4, 2, 1, 2. Then we're going to move the pinky down to the 3rd string 7th fret. Then to the 2nd string 7th fret. Then to the 1st string 7th fret. And uh, as Tommy Tedesco pointed out, when you're playing real fast, uh, the ear really doesn't hear the note. So you could even make a mistake on one of those notes. I probably did, and uh, you can't tell. As long as it's rhythmically going fine. Uh, Tommy Tedesco, studio guitarist, I remember I saw him once and he said, whenever he's got a fast run to play, he just plays pure chromatic, meaning just... Like that. And as long as his final note fits in with the chord that he's on at that time, everything will sound fine. Like that. The ear really just doesn't register the tonal qualities of those notes. So uh, that's what he said. Rather than learn uh, 96 scales, he would just play uh, all the notes chromatically and make sure he landed on a final note that worked out. Okay, so it's the two chords I did before. A C diminished, and then keep this pinky anchored, move the rest of the chord down, and you've got a B flat chord. And then So I'm going to pick the first string, fifth fret, pick down, pull it up, and then down on the second string, then up on the first, then down on the fourth fret, third fret, second fret, like that. I'm going to play what looks like an F chord, but it's an F major 7 actually. Mm -hmm. 